Hi YouTube, welcome back to another Blades to Be project video. Something a little different today. I had an uncle of mine give me a little bully and linen uh, watchmaker's lathe. So a little mini lathe, we'll show you that here in a second. And just gonna spend a little bit of time today going through that, take it apart, clean it up. Uh, there's one part we're gonna make on it to repair it. And uh, I already played with the foot switch a little bit. I'll show you some pictures of repairing that but really just to clean up a little bit of a restoration project here on this mini lathe. So let's take a look at what we've got. All right, so this is the lathe, a little bully linen watchmaker's lathe. This one is just for woodworking. It doesn't have the screw fed cross slide on it. So set up for woodworking, came with a whole bunch of little collets in here, these little wire size collets. It does have the, the rest of the spindle and that screws in there to hold the collets in place. Nice little tool rest on here, moving tool rest for woodwork. For the cleanup on it today, it's got a little bit of surface rust, so I'm just gonna take that over to the buffer. I don't wanna remove any material, just wanna clean off the rust. I put a coat of oil on this right now, so we'll wipe that oil back off. Buff this a little bit, try to clean off the rust and just to protect it. Uh, I've got some new belts coming. I was able to get the number off this belt. We've got some new ones ordered. So we'll go ahead and pull the spindle out get the belt off of there and we'll take that apart before we're buffing it and again just to clean up inside the other piece we're going to repair on this all right the other piece we're going to repair where this mounts this shaft that goes through the bottom here is a little bit bent i've already put this in a vise was able to loosen that shaft pretty easy It is fully functional the way it is right now, but hey, we've got a lathe over here. Let's go ahead and make a new shaft. Pretty straightforward. It's gonna be eight millimeter threaded on each end. Hit this size in the middle where it goes through and holds this piece together. We'll remake that piece. And like I say, we're just gonna go through and buff this, clean off some of the surface rust, take this piece apart, clean off some of this surface rust. So we'll use the buffer for that. I'll be wearing a respirator while I use the buffer. Anytime you're using a buffer, that buffing compound, not something you want to breathe in. So I'll have the respirator on. Won't be able to talk very well while we're doing that part of it. And then we'll head over to the lathe. We'll make that new piece. Something else I already worked on a little bit was this foot switch. So again, the way this operates, this is a reversible motor. You flip the brushes on here, get the motor to change direction, and then you can control this foot switch to control the speed of the lathe in addition to you've got some adjustments on the pulleys. So I had this apart and I took a couple pictures of it apart when it was dirty, just full of a lot of dust and what you'd expect after a lot of years. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't take very good pictures when I cleaned it up and put it back together, but I did get this fully operational. I have tested it, the motor runs, and I'll drop a couple of those pictures of fixing up this foot switch in here as well. Okay, I've got this big long shaft went through the cover. This large spring went underneath that cover, pushed that down. The cover came off first, just a little twist, was able to get that big piece around uh, where it went into the side over here, pulled out the other two side screws that go into the side of this big resistor. And this little cardboard plate is kind of wedged in along this side. Basically took this resistor and twisted it up on this side and it came out from underneath that arm that moves. So I should be able to pivot that back in underneath, keeping that arm in place because that is all riveted. I'm not gonna be able to get that arm out of there. And you can see underneath here is where my wires are connected. So I should be able to replace that piece of wire. Make sure I go through the screen when I do that. So replace the piece of wire and clean this all, this resistor all up. And then I should be able to pivot that back underneath. So the motor does run, the foot switch is working. At this point, we're just gonna do a little bit of cleanup and make a new shaft on that. So. Stand by, we'll get this set up in the buffer and we'll get that, we'll get this pulled apart first. We'll get it buffed and then we'll head over to the lathe and work on that shaft. Stay tuned. Almost forgot. A couple other things we are going to do is we're going to go ahead and mount these rubber feet onto the bottom of this base. So that way it's going to lift it up off the table. There's bolt heads on the bottom where this motor mounts and we've got this knob that threads on the bottom when we mount the lathe in place. 
And we want to make sure that we have enough room and enough clearance so that when all these things are bolted on the bottom of the plate, that the plate still sits up off the table. Found these on Amazon. Four of these are actually compressor feet. So we're going to drill and tap holes in the corners. For this one, don't want to put it in the corner and have it interfere with our clamping spot. So we'll probably mount that somewhere a little bit more over here and out of the way. So we'll get our feet mounted onto the bottom. Probably have to put another little quarter inch spacer or something in there just to make sure we get it up high enough. And we'll get that done. Only other thing I wanted to show you is, again, just pretty amazing piece of engineering if you haven't looked up uh, Bowley Linen lathes online. But uh, came with this six jaw chuck, which is fully functional as well. It's already pretty clean. It works. I don't plan on taking this apart. May clean it up just a little bit, make sure that it's well oiled, but again, fully functioning. Should be kind of a fun lathe to play with, do some little projects. The kind of things my uncle used to do in it was uh, he liked to repair chess pieces. So get a chess piece went missing and you can see he was in the process of making one here. Had one in the works when he sent this to me. So just an idea of what you can do in this lathe when it's done, but should be something fun to have around the shop. That little nut came off there. That's what holds the spindle in place. These little brass covers are just dust covers trying to keep material out of there. I think that's a lock nut, so I believe we've got to get this next piece off here as well. So here, what holds that together, so it's tapered on both ends, and that is just a really nice press fit on there. It does have very small little key in there that lines up with the key slot here. And like I say, just a really nice press fit to go together. And we do have a screw notch that we're going to want to line up when I get that pulley back on there. So I want to make sure I get that pulley screw back in the notch, so we'll have to work to line that up. But there is our spindle shaft removed out of here. Pretty clean, really. Looks good. And we pop off that other dust ring, and then I'm able to get this out. We'll be able to get in here and really clean this up nicely. And now we'll be able to change that belt when it gets here. The headstock assembly comes off. We'll be able to clean that up. And there we go, all apart. So let's wipe some oil off of this. We'll get it on the buffer. All right, we'll take a little acetone and now we'll clean off all our buffing compound.
All right, let's get over to the lathe and make a shaft to take care of this one. All right, let's talk a little bit about what we're making here. So again, this shaft should be eight millimeter diameter. And I am coming up with 322, 322 and a half there. Coming up with a little less there, only 315. So this piece does need to fit, you know, nice fit inside of our, our base, our stand. So maybe that's a little over eight millimeter. Cause yeah, that thread now is measuring more like 314, 316. So let's see what that compares to eight millimeter. Eight millimeters in inches is, yeah, 315, 3149. So definitely that's an eight millimeter thread. Let's figure out what pitch we have on there. Okay, eight millimeter and our pitch is 1.4 millimeters. Make sure it's the same on both ends. And it, it is eight by 1.4. You know what, let me check here. All right, eight by 1.4. Definitely I can turn 1.4 pitch threads. We'll talk a little bit about that when we get to it. So fitting in our base, I mean, there's really nothing snug about that fit. I'm not sure why they left it oversized. The piece that's gonna be a, a decent fit in there is the end of the shaft. And even that, not very snug. I mean, they didn't go for much sizes or much precision, but that's it. So not really super precise fit anywhere on that. So we'll match up close. So we're gonna hit 322, 323 for this diameter. Let's measure this other one. That is 410. And again, it's not super snug on there. We could go a little bigger. All right, so 325 to 410-ish. We're gonna build our shaft this way, and then I'm gonna make it a little bit longer over here. I'm gonna add an extra half inch on for the piece that's, in addition to being bent, it's also broken off on that end. So I need to be roughly, yeah, I'll tell you what, we're gonna set our DRO to figure out where we need to be there. All right, let's get a pen and write some of this down. Okay, so that's gonna be zero, 2.375. To the front, or to that piece right there, plus 0.425, and 2.8 inches, plus 0 0.6, 3.4 inches. All right, now we got a drawing to work from. Should make this a little easier. So I'll take all my measurements from one end, so make it a little easier for the DRO. So we've got 2.375 inches to the front. 2.8 inches to the back of our step on the shaft, 3.4 inches to where we start this thread. And we've got 410 diameter we're gonna hit for the big one, 322 for this long part of the shaft. And then this back end, we'll just turn it for the, the regular eight millimeter all the way, that 0.315 diameter. I'm gonna see if I can find an eight millimeter nut for us so that when we're threading these, eight by 1.4 on each end, I've got a nut to be able to try on there. Well, actually I'll be able to try it on this end, for this other end, we're just gonna be cutting exactly the same depth. So we're gonna end up cutting both of those from uh, from the same side. I'm only gonna be able to try that on the one end. And we'll talk a little more about threading when we get there and show you what we set up on the lathe to actually cut some threads. Let's go ahead and make some chips.
All right, so let's take a look at what threading is all about here. So for threading, got a 60 degree insert on here. So threads are cut in the V and it's 60 degrees. So we've got a 60 degree insert. And with metric threads, once I engage, I have to just run the lathe frontwards and backwards to get in and out of my threads to start and stop. When I'm cutting standard threads, I can actually engage a called half nuts and it will be repeatable and engage in the same place to make sure I get in the same groove of my thread. For metric threads, I can't do that. So what I do is I undercut at the back. So as I'm running the lathe, when I get into that groove, I have to wind the carriage back and stop the lathe at the same time so that it doesn't dig into the rest of my part and it doesn't end midway through a cut. So we'll be running pretty slow speed to be able to stop in there. For this thread, we're gonna be cutting that starting here. So I'll actually be able to line up the lathe, feed into the depth that I wanna cut and then cut and then end over here on the other end. Again, multiple passes, you can't cut a thread in one pass. So multiple passes, uh, 1.4 is not a standard pitch for eight millimeter. So we're cutting an eight millimeter by 1.4 millimeter pitch. Um, thankfully, I do have the nut that is gonna go on the other end of the shaft and it's threaded the same on both ends. So I do have a eight by 1.4 millimeter nut. So I'll be able to test when I cut my threads to the right depth. And whatever I cut on this end, I'm just gonna cut the same on that end because I will not be able to test the thread until after we're done. So I did a calculation. Based on my calculation, our thread depth should be somewhere about 30, or yeah, about 34 thou per side. So somewhere around 68 thou. So that's how deep I went with my undercut was I went uh, just about 70 thou deep to make sure I've got a couple thou clearance. So we should have enough room there to be able to get in there and get our threads cut. So that's the plan. So how do you cut threads on a lathe? Well, you come over here and your lathe is gonna have some kind of a chart. This lathe cuts in inches and in millimeters. So we look down here and I need to cut a 1.4 millimeter thread. So I need to set my gearbox at LCR8Z. So I come down here. So L for low, so we're in low. C, need to get this over to R and need to get this over to Z and get this down to eight. Now, in order to be able to move these, I need to spin the chuck a little bit, get things moving. But what that is gonna do is that is gonna control the speed of this lead screw. So normally when you're feeding on a lathe, you're feeding, you're using this feed rod. So this feed rod is what's spinning and that's what controls the amount of cut per revolution of the lathe. But when you're threading, you're actually using the lead screw. And then you engage the lead screw by engaging these half nuts over here and they clamp around the lead screw. So instead of engaging the feed like we normally would, we're gonna be engaging the half nuts. And as I said, for metric, I can engage them once and then I just have to run the lathe frontwards and backwards as I continue to make passes. So that's what we're gonna go do. All right, well, my insert threading tool is not gonna work for threads that small. So for threads that small, I'm gonna to have to use a brazed carbide tool bit. So thankfully I have one. Thankfully we've got our grinder set up for, we'll go get one sharper. Let's just make sure that's going to have clearance to get in there. And we'll see how we're doing for height. All these brazed carbides are not the same, so we will need to adjust the height on that for sure. sharpen this first and then once we get it sharpened we'll make sure we are lined up in there all right let's get a sense of how fast our carriage is going to be moving here That is plenty for speed. We can always turn that down if we need.
That'll be good. There's one end done. So we've got our depth and I'm not gonna be able to try the nut on the other end. So we're gonna go and do it exactly the same. I will come and uh, touch the top of that off with some emery before we pull it out of here and just make sure. But I think that that is feeling pretty darn good. Let's get this lined up down here on our other. Okay, well, we are disengaged, so that is gonna have to work because we can't cut anymore. Let's get some emery on the outside of those, clean those up a little bit, and get this out of here. Let's get that out of there, hacksaw it off. I seem to like making stuff twice. So after I got this out of the lathe and blew it, you know, put some air to it, man, the threads feel really good, but they get about that far on and it gets really sticky. You can sort of force it, but it just doesn't like to go much farther. Same thing on this end. You get it about that far and it starts to get a little sticky. So I got to thinking what else is really close to eight millimeter. And when I measured that pitch at 1.4 millimeter pitch, which is a really odd ball size that I couldn't find anywhere else, I got thinking, hey, let me just double check if that's not 5 16 18. And sure enough, it is 5 16 18. So it's a standard, non-metric, standard bolt, 5 16 inch. And even though it's pretty darn close, this would almost work. Hey, we've got some more steel, so I made another one. So this time we're gonna cut 5 16 by 18 thread instead. So to set our lathe up for 18 threads per inch, it's gonna be a little different than what we had last time. So we're gonna look at inches and we're gonna be LBS2V. So we'll get that set up on here, 2SB, and we'll get that over to V. Again, I'll probably have to move some things around a little bit to get the V in there. But we'll get that on L2SB. V. So we're going to do 18 threads per inch. So for this one, I could engage and disengage the half nuts. Right. So since we're not cutting metric threads this time, we're able to use our thread chasing dial on here. And you can see that we're cutting 18 threads per inch. So that means I can engage the half nuts on any non-numbered position. So I've got four different choices. I can engage on any non-numbered spot on there. So we will not have to go forward and reverse. We'll be able to use our half nuts to engage and disengage Gauge. makes it a little easier to cut the thread. Let's get started. So I'm all set up. I got this shaft turned out and we are ready to get on there and just recut the threads and get caught up to where we were before. Let's cut some threads. Okay, I sharpened my tool bit, moved it out of here. So now I've got to set this back up again and make sure I get back in our same thread groove. Oh, the angle changed just hair on me. All right, we got that back in there. And now, need to make sure we're still in the middle of our thread. We'll go with that and see what that looks like on a cut. I adjusted that a little bit, so now let me reset this zero again properly. All right, let's back out a little from where we were, and let's get this thread going again.
That's a good feeling thread. All right, let's hex out this off again. All right, well this time we got it. So we have threads on there all the way to the end. Threads on nice this time. And we're gonna get the thread on the other way too. So there we go, 5 16ths by 18, not eight mil by 1.4 pitch. So it looks like our other one, except now we've got an extra half an inch of thread down there on that end of the shaft. Get a little more engagement as we go through here. Nice, you know, a little nicer fit than we had before. So nice fit up in there, and we'll get this mounted back on there. We'll get this lathe mostly put back together. We'll just save, uh, we'll leave the headstock apart so that we can get that pulley put on there after, but We'll get that assembled for now, and then I'm gonna pull that motor off and we'll get this plate in the drill press and we'll drill our four holes in the corners to get our feet mounted on there. We're just about ready to put this thing back together. Stay tuned. All right, quick pick up where we left off yesterday. Here we are, we've got our shaft complete. So this is the one we ended up with. And you know, hated that we made that mistake yesterday, figuring out a pitch wrong, but God, it's just, it's amazing. You know, you put those two together and there's really no movement. Put the long ones together and you can just get a little bit of rock in there. On that short distance, that's why I missed it with the pitch gauge. Felt good in there, but I should have known. I looked up and eight millimeter with a 1.4 millimeter pitch. Didn't find it anywhere, but what the heck? Hey, we got to cut a metric thread and a inch thread on our lathe, and just a good testament to this PM 1440TL. Didn't have to change any gears on the back of that lathe to switch from metric threads to inch threads. Got to cut one thread with having to go forward and reverse on metric, and we got to cut another one using the thread chasing dial and being able to engage and disengage the half nuts. Yeah, you know, good experience. And you know what? That's what we come out here for. This isn't a paid job. This is just messing around at home. So good to learn something different and get some good experience. So we've got our shafts done. Let's start putting this thing back together. I'm going to go run over to the vise, put a little grease on this. We'll bolt this back together. So we'll get this onto our shaft. Then we're going to come put this in place and we're going to look at, actually I can do that right now. We're going to see how much we have sticking out the bottom of this. And I need to make a new washer to go on the bottom. You can see that the thin washer that was on there, put that on the back side of this hole and it just can't handle the, the pressure. So we're going to make a nice, you know, probably quarter inch washer or so. But I want to see how much room I have. My goal is that when this thread's on, you know, we just get it to, to thread flush. That's why I made it a little bit longer. So that should leave me, you know, quarter, three eighths of an inch or so to do that. So I'm going to measure on the back side of this. We'll get this bolted together. We'll get over the lathe. We'll make a nice thick washer to put on the back side of that. I've got some 4140 left over. Then we will oil this all back up now that we've buffed it. So we'll make sure that it is all oiled and protected. We'll get it all put back together and we need to drill the holes to put the feet on. Once I know how much room I have, probably gonna need to make some little spacers. I'm just gonna use some quarter inch plywood, maybe have to stack a couple pieces together, make sure we have enough spacers on the back side so that when this is all assembled, all put together, everything's gonna have clearance above the table. That's what we've got up next. Stay tuned. So now we've got 
couple spacers to put on each of our feet. That is going to get us up high enough. When we get this over in the drill press to drill our pick, we'll punch holes in the middle of all these as well so that we'll be able to stack them up on there. And I think I've got some black spray paint. Maybe we'll spray paint them black really quick so that they look like they fit in underneath there. Got our feet pretty much made. Let's get over to the lathe and let's make our heavy washer. All right, well, definitely haven't got that parting tool mastered yet. All those chips dig around in there and mess it up. And this is a little too small to grab onto to try to face off, but I don't know. Let's see. Let's see if I can't get that to dial up in there all right, that we can take a skim off and make that look good. We definitely have enough to hold on to. Let's see how long, if I can just dial that in real quick and we'll skim that off the face. Well, that makes for a much better looking piece, for sure. Still have a little bit of those uh, drag marks on there, but that looks good. We have our washer. That is gonna work. I think that's our best bet, is to put that over there, rather than over there. That's about five and a half inches back. So 2.4 inches, we'll go in one and a quarter. So on all these other corners, we're just gonna go one and a quarter, one and a quarter. Voila, get a little spray paint on those. I think while I'm spray painting, I might even give a quick rub on this and spray paint the top of that, make it all black, make it look pretty. All right, we are making some progress on this. So here's how the paint job turned out. I think that turned out looking pretty nice. Should be good when we get that all put together. So we've got the paint job done today. Instead of stacking up a bunch of washers in here, this one came with a big hole and I'm only using quarter inch bolts. So instead of stacking up a whole bunch of washers in there, I've got some aluminum. I'm just going to go ahead and make some aluminum washers to put in there. Give them a little bit of thickness and put a quarter inch hole in the middle to fill in that gap and help make these a little easier to bolt onto our base. So we're going to knock out some quarter inch washers 
And then on this motor, you know, I really can't, or I don't want to take this over to the buffer because, you know, all that buffing dust will fill up in there and who knows what damage that'll do to our motor that's currently working. So I played a little bit with some buffing, just some, uh, yeah, automotive buffing compound, rubbing compound. So I played a little bit with some rubbing compound on here and that cleaned it up pretty nice. I've also got some semi-chrome polish. So I'm going to go through and see what we can't do to get this motor looking a little nicer. So we're waiting on the belt to come in still today. That paint's had a couple of days to dry. So let's knock out a couple washers and see what we can do to clean up this motor. And then we will start getting this thing back together. Let's head over to the lathe. And there we go. One, two, three, four. So that little project is done. Those fit in there nice. Now for our quarter inch bolts, much better fit than having to stack up a bunch of washers on there. So that was good. Over on the lathe, I love to use these little unimportant projects to test out you know, things like my DRO. So what I did is I figured out where I was turning that DRO, where I was going to for this other diameter, and I would face one off. I would just go back to that same reading on the DRO, go in a quarter of an inch, machine that, and then face it off. Never measured after I did the first one. And they came out, we are 476, 475, 475.5, and 475.5. So all four of those came out within a thousandth of an inch. And that was with taking that tool back off, putting it back on my quick change tool post. So again, just a good confidence boost on how accurate and how good that quick change tool post works as you're changing from one tool to the other. So again, project like this, it didn't matter. Sure sped up the process, wasn't measuring in between. And yeah, knowing they can all come out within a thou on some of those quick repeatable items. So that was good. So we've got our feet made. We can get those feet bolted onto our plate. And uh, once we get that bolted on, then I'm going to pull that motor over here and we're going to sit there and work on buffing and cleaning up that motor. So let's go ahead and get these feet bolted on this plate. There we go. Nice. Well, that is just what we're looking for. We now have thread sticking all the way out the bottom. We've got clearance over the table and the two little nuts that stick on the back of that motor where the bolt heads come down. Don't take any room other than that. So now this sits nice and flat on any bench. Woo, that's starting to look pretty. Get the rest of it together and then we'll get that motor cleaned up a little bit. And yeah, it's starting to come together.
Well, there is a shined up motor. Let's get that mounted back on the base. I put a little wax on there from everything I read. Sounds like after you take the time to shine it up a little bit, a little bit of wax just helps slow it down. So maybe it'll stay shiny longer. You know, I'll make sure I drop in a little before picture. It still, you know, doesn't shine up like chrome, but uh, I'll drop in a before picture and I think we'll see a pretty considerable difference in how that looks. So let's get this back on our plate. I think that is starting to clean up pretty nice. So now all we need is get a new belt in here, get a new belt on there, and we'll be able to start this up and see how she's turning. Get that pulley mounted back on there, and we'll be set. New belt should be in next week. And I also have some Brasso coming. I just, again, I don't want to put these little pieces on the buffer. Everything I've read says they are pretty susceptible to getting out of round, so I don't want to get any heat on them. I don't want to take a chance on that flying out of my fingers in the buffer and smacking the ground. So I've got a little bit of Brasso coming. We'll clean those up with some Brasso. We'll get a new belt on there. She'll be done. All right, stick around. This project is nearly wrapping up. Well, we still don't have any belts in, but we got some Brasso. Let's knock out a quick part of this, and we're going to clean up these little rings right here. Hopefully this Brasso shines them up nice. And then I've got some metal polish. Uh, I could actually stick this little piece on the buffer, but I'm going to see what the metal polish does to shine it up and hit that on the buffer if needed. But let's see how we can get this brass looking like. Truly amazing the difference just a couple of little rubs with some Brasso can make. Well, serious improvement there. Get those back on pretty soon when we get this all put back together. All right, not as impressed with the metal polish. I think we'll just hit that on the buffer. One step closer, waiting on a belt. All right, we've got a belt today. We are gonna get this thing put back together. And I think I have just the project for us to make on here to wrap up this video. So let's get this reassembled and let's get to work in here a little bit. So if you remember on that pulley, got this little screw and there was a dimple in the shaft and I really made sure that I knew exactly where that screw was hit on the shaft and then lined up with the dimple and made sure I was able to get two or three more turns on that screw to really make sure I got that screw in the dimple. So that's good. But all for nothing, if we don't put the belt on. And this little piece has a keyway in it, so we need to make sure we get that key in the key slot. Well, before we get building something, there it is, all back together. Again, I'll drop in a little before picture. We'll get a look at the before and the after. And then, like I said, I've got a little project for us. We're gonna get in here and, and work it. There's some of the other accessories it came with, all the other collets, got those out of their bags. Again, I don't have a tailstock. I don't have a screw-fed carriage but I would say that this has cleaned up pretty nice. I can see why they run round belts. A little tough to get your uh, belt alignment just perfect on here. So we'll play with that a little bit as we get it going. 
but I think it's gonna run. So let's go ahead and knock out a quick project here. Little test run, we'll see how that belt does. There we go. Okay, we got her spinning. Let's try this little project. Well, there we have it. That's what I decided to make for our first project is a little baseball and a bat because, hey, nobody's going to hire me for my woodworking skills anytime soon. But bottom line, I think this project was a home run. Appreciate you joining me in the shop for another Blades to Be project video. Hey, hopefully you enjoyed this one. Enjoyed refurbishing and bringing this bowling line and laying it back to life. And of course, putting it into operation and using it. What's the point in refurbishing? What's the point in having these things if you're not going to use them to make some chips? So again, hope you enjoyed making this little project. I truly do think this one was a home run. A lot of fun for me. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next time in the workshop. Until then, hey, keep making some chips.